Hi everyone, I'm Shinjinji. Welcome to the 11th episode of the Night in the Woods in Unity series. In this episode, we are going to create action triggers that will help us interact with objects and characters in the scene. As usual, let's first add the resources that we are going to need in the episode. In the Assets folder inside Sprites, create a new folder named Actions. This is where we are going to put every image that refers to an action that can be done in game. Drag the image you'll find in the video description inside the Actions folder. In the hierarchy, let's create a new empty game object and name it Scene Interaction. Reset its transforms and add a new box collider 2D component. Check the is trigger property so that it acts as a trigger. Then right click on the scene interaction game object and create a new empty one. Rename it to visual trigger and add a sprite renderer and a box collider 2D. Also this one set to is trigger. Select the scene interaction game object and in the inspector select edit collider. Change it so that it represents the error that will trigger the interaction. Then select the visual trigger and after adding a sprite, do the same. This time you have to make sure that the area covers the entire sprite. In the assets folder, go into scripts, then triggers and create a new folder named interactions. Inside it create a new c -sharp script and name it object activator. Open the script, get rid of the code inside the class and add two methods. One will be responsible for when we do enter the trigger and the other one when we exit it. When we do enter the trigger, the child of this game object, in our case the visual trigger, will activate and when we exit, it will deactivate. Back to Unity, select the scene interaction game object and add the object activator to it. Then disable the visual trigger and run the game to see if it works. As you can see, when we enter the area, the visual trigger gets enabled and when we exit, it gets disabled. Back in the interactions folder, let's create three C-sharp scripts, the first one named scene action, the second one action dialogue and the last one action trigger. Open the scene action one and remove the code inside it. Make the class abstract and create a private sprite that we will use to display the icon for the action. Right below write this abstract method named interact. We will use it to abstract the action that the visual trigger will do when pressed. And then a public method to get the icon for the action. Open the action dialog. To remove the warning go back to scene action and make sure that action icon is set to null. Also, remove the imports that we are not using from both classes. Back to the action dialog, remove the code inside it and inherit from scene action. This will allow us to implement the interact method in different ways depending on our needs. For now, we are just going to show a message in the console. In the next episode, we are going to use this to trigger a dialog. And now for the last script, open the action trigger one. Let's create an instance of the abstract class that will hold the reference to whatever action we are going to pass down. Then a collider representing the area that the visual trigger can be clicked on and a vector tree for the point that the user is going to click. In the start method we are going to set the sprite property of the sprite renderer to the one that's been associated with the action. And we also need a reference to the collider on the game object. Once that is done, we are going to check for a left mouse click on the update loop and see if it was inside the hitbox area. If it was, we interact with the trigger and we perform the action. At the end of it, we disable the game object. Back into Unity, select the visual trigger game object and add the action trigger component to it. Remove the sprite from the sprite renderer and go into prefabs triggers folder. We will create a new one named the scene interaction and drag the scene interaction game object into it. Now in the hierarchy create a new empty game object and call it actions. Inside it create a new empty one, name it action dialog. Add the action dialog component to it. Drag the icon you wish to display to the action icon property. Click on the visual trigger and assign the action dialog to the scene action property. Before trying the script, duplicate the player game object. 
Rename it Sally and remove all the components except from the sprite renderer. In the color property of the sprite renderer, choose black. Move the Sally character to a place that you like along with the scene interaction. Now run the game, select the visual trigger from the hierarchy and place it on top of the Sally character. In the inspector, right click on the transform and select copy component. Now stop the game and right click the transform again. This time selecting paste component values. Run the game and you'll see that this time the visual trigger is placed in the right spot. And once you click on it, it will perform the action and then disable itself. Finally, in the next episode we are going to create the dialogue system. So be sure to check it out and get along with the series. This is all for this video, like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode comes out and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the journey!